here today with Daniel Murphy, 2013 and 2050 European Drift Queen. Hi Daniel, great to meet you. How are you today? I'm not so bad, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You sadly lost your car in a garage fire. How is it looking for you to get out there again? At the moment, uh, things are pretty bleak at the minute. Um, you know, I've literally lost everything I've worked for my whole, the last 10 years of my drifting career. Um, along with my brother's car, it's uh, pretty distressing at the moment for me. Um, but look, all I can do is say that I'm not going to give up. Well, I'll find a way somehow, please, somehow, please God. Most would think it's all over now. What drives your determination? Um, pure stubbornness, I suppose, in, in my character and my heart. People that tell me I can't do something, uh, I just want to fight harder to prove them wrong. I grew up um, in a family business. My father was not very supportive in my hobbies at the time, and it just made me want to prove him wrong more than anything. But then as the years went on, that trait stuck with me that basically where there's a will, there's a way, you know. Anything is possible once you put your mind to it. You won the 2013 and 2015 European Drift Queen. Are you, are you looking to conquer any further, or the, any for future other champions, championships? Um, at the moment, especially not having a car at the minute, everything is wide open and it's just almost like a big black hole at the minute. Um, I am hoping, I mean this year I was hoping to go back and compete with the Queen of Europe to win another championship and have my hat trick done and then I was going to try maybe set aside for something else. But at the minute the world is my oyster. Um, you know, I've been invited to a lot of different events to compete all over the world, so I suppose the next thing is just I need to wait and see what my next plan is, what car I can get, if I can afford to buy another car, if I can get a drive in a team car, and basically the world is my oyster, I'll go wherever it takes me. Some would say it's a man's sport, do you ever feel a little intimidated? Yeah, I mean, as a woman, it's only natural to be intimidated. You know, there's been a lot of um, jealousy, begrudgery and hard times through my career. But, you know, at the end of the day, that kind of comes back to what get, drives me more and fires my passion more to prove everybody wrong, basically. And in a nice possible way, put a two fingers up to people and show that women can do this too. <laughs> do you ever get nervous before a race? Yes, I mean everybody, if you never got nervous before a race or before you're about to do something, I don't think you're human or you're not passionate enough about something. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the ways that I try to distract myself is I maybe not go to the toilet for hours so that I'm sitting on the, when I'm sitting on the start line and I'm queuing and going, I need to go to the toilet. So it's a distraction for me. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things you kind of have to make in your own head to try to get away from the nerves that you do get on the start line. <laughs> I read that you pay the car race yourself. Do you, do, does, that make, does that make wins even more special? Yeah, I mean, again, that, that can kind of sometimes come into the thing, okay, well, you're a woman in a man's world and you're doing this, you're doing that and the other. And then people see photographs of me dirty working on the cars and go, oh, did she just lie on the ground? and put on the dirt <laughs> and you know that's not the truth. Building the car myself and doing all the work on it has definitely helped me as a competitor to understand my car so that when I'm actually on the grid I can feel or hear if something is wrong and potentially resolve a problem before it happens. Does preparing the car take up all your spare time? Um, when I had a car yes basically. Um, it's all about basically setting time aside. I mean, before I go to an event in Europe, I could be preparing the car for three weeks beforehand. Um, if it's local, it really just depends what needs to be done, to be honest. Do you get to practice much between events? No, um, I was never really privileged enough to be able to practice too much before events due to financial, basically financial strain. Um, I'm a self-funded race car, you know, I'm a self-funded race car driver, a competitor, so literally everything that went into my car and my career is my own blood, sweat, tears and pennies. <laughs> in an article I read, you said that it's hard to get sponsorships. Is that still the case? Yes. I mean, it's a, it's a tough world in any sport to be able to get sponsorship. Um, 
especially, you know, people think because I'm a woman, I'm in drifting and I'm very well known, very respected. I've had a great career so far, a lot of achievements. You know, they reckon I just walk into sponsors or sponsors walk to me. And unfortunately, that's not the case. I wish it was. Um, but no, it's uh, getting sponsorship is a really, really, really tough task. And at, I think, to be honest, that's one of the biggest downfalls I have at the moment is, you know, my attitude is, well, if I have achieved so much to date so far on my own, self-funded, you know, with some support from family and friends, well, if I had big support behind me, what could I actually achieve? Are there any other types of motorsport you fancy go at? I always wanted to do rallying. Initially, when I started, um, I always wanted to get into rallying, but I couldn't afford it. And uh, then drifting started, so it was deemed as the poor man's motorsport at the time. So I said, I can do that. Yeah, I can give that a go. Um, I never believed I'd get this far, you know, and achieve what I've achieved. And that in itself has opened up a lot of doors for me. I've also had an opportunity to race uh, the GT3 touring cars. Uh, that was down at the special track in Ascari in Spain, and that was amazing. I drove a Dodge Viper down there, and then I was actually here in Mondello another time, invited for the rally cross. So, yeah, it, it's, there's a lot of anything with wheels and a steering wheel. I'll I'll give it a go. <laughs> but if there are potential sponsors watching this, what would you say to them to convince them to come aboard? Come aboard. There's so much I could say, um, you know, it, it each depends on a brand and a company, but all I can say is um, my mission in what I want to do is I want the world to know who Danielle Murphy is, and if you want to join that with me, you're more than welcome, and I'll, I'll do what I can for your business. Do the dogs want to ever race me, say? Um, these, <laughs> these little guys, actually, uh, after my car was destroyed in the fire, you know, I've gone through a pretty tough time, and... It, my mum decided that she needed to find a way for me to, I suppose, put my head back in the game again and look after these guys. So these are only three months old, but uh, yeah, I think they'll be coming to a few events. My mum wanted to call them Al and Tezza, was because my brother's car was also was in the fire, was an Alteza, <laughs> and mine was a Sylvia. But so we stuck on, uh, this one is Cookie which is spelled uh, as the Nissan cookie model of the Nissan Sylvia, K-O-U-K-I. And this one's Teddy, because he's just like a little teddy bear and loves, needs loving. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure they'll be coming to the events in the future. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> well, we think he's asleep. <laughs>